Hi everybody, um, in this video I'm going to show you how you can manually edit the uh, loot spawn values on your Xbox or PlayStation Nitrado Daisy private server. Um, now you may well have seen my one of my other videos where I'm using an online tool to um, to produce those values. However, one of the problems with these online tools, and you'll find various tools around the internet, is you don't always know how accurate they are and whether they may well be introducing errors into your into your types.xml file. So it's not that difficult to um, to edit the files manually, um, and you can do it with text editors or of, you know fancy text editors or just um, things like things like um, textpad um, and things like that that you've already got on on your on your computer but we're going to show you how to do it sort of in the nitrado interface so uh, all you need to do is you just go to your um, nitrado uh, dashboard pick the um, pick the server that you want to work on hit the little uh, interface thing now nitrado do recommend that you stop your server while you're doing edits um, I'm not sure if that's completely necessary, but that's what they recommend. I'm not going to do it in this case. And the first thing I want to do is actually we're going to go and look. We're going to look at the general settings. And I'm going to try and remember to do this on all of my videos now. If you are ever going through and you're changing things and things stop working really badly on your on your server, um, don't do a reinstall don't like delete everything the, the things you want to do kind of in order if things go wrong is you want to just do a restart to see if that sort of things out you want to roll back to an old version of the xml file that you that you um were editing if that and if that doesn't work you want to tick this reset mission xml to default and tick that and then restart your server and that will take all the xml files and it'll put them back to normal obviously you're going to lose any any changes that you've done but it will mean that your server will start working properly again for the people on it okay so that's like the PSA bit of this where we want to go now is the file browser and uh, you want to go into daisy ps missions and you can see it says D daisy offline Cherneris plus if it's a Livonia server it will say Enoch you click on that one and then we want to go into the DB file here and then we want to go into down here. We want to go to the one that says types. But before we start, <laughs> we want to back it up. So what you do is over here, you'll see a little white box that says copy or move. So we want to copy it first. And it actions, types, and then we click copy here. Now this is a bit, this is a bit odd. It just comes up with this box. You're like, oh, but it wants a new name. So we're going to do types, back up, 18th of the second, 20 dot xml we're going to save that there so we've got a nice little backup that will appear in just a sec there it is so we can roll back to that now all we're going to do is we're just going to click on types xml and this is one of the powerhouses behind your version of daisy between behind your server kind of how it works however another psa another warning before we dive in is you don't need to change too much you know, Daisy is pretty, you know, they've spent a long time getting it to the place it is now where it's fairly stable and loot is pretty much, okay, you might not be able to find certain things, but other things are okay. Um, so don't go mad, because if you go mad with the types um, .xml file, if you start introducing hundreds of weapons that weren't there before, then things are going to get unstable and the game won't work properly and you you may well think well wait if i go from 30 m4s to to 300 m4s that'd be all right wouldn't it there'll just be m4s all over the map it, no unfortunately it doesn't work like that what happens most of the time is it breaks the loot system and then maybe nothing will spawn in and you have these problems so now you may know you may need to watch this at full screen in fact so see if we can make it a bit bigger for you so you can so you can see it here um, so the, the the file starts and the, the first file we'll see is the ACOG optic. So this is a good one where we can just talk about what these uh, what what all this uh, words mean and numbers mean. So first thing you've got type name is ACOG optic. So that's one of the scopes for one of the guns. Then this is the really important number nominal fifteen. So what that means is. 
there should be 15 of these ACOG optics on your DAISY server at any one time. Fairly, fairly straightforward, isn't it? Lifetime, 7,200. So the lifetime is in seconds how long one of these optics should stay on the map before it disappears and respawns somewhere else. So 7,200 seconds. So what's that? So 7,200 divided by 60 is three hours. Okay, so, so it should stay there for three hours and then it'll, it'll disappear and go somewhere else. Restock is 1800. Now, restock is, is something that it's easy to play around with, but it plays a very important part in how the server works. So, restock says, when I, res when, when I need to start respawning these in, should I respawn them all at once, or should I do a delay? And this is a delay in seconds between each item restocking. So, if you can imagine if restock was zero, and there was only... Um, there was only five of these um, ACOG stock sites on the map. What would happen is it would it would respawn ten of them all at once, bang, and they, they would all respawn at once. The problem with that is that the way that Daisy looks at the the map is it doesn't look at the whole map at the same time. It can't. It takes chunks of it and looks at them, and so you could have a situation where all of a sudden, if they all were respawning at the same time, they would all respawn in a similar place. So you'd end up with loads of ACOG sites in, I don't know, Northwest Airfield, say, and they, they wouldn't be spread around the map. But by having a gap between each one respawning, it allows the CLE, or the, what we call the Central Loot Economy, to spawn them in different places around the map. So that's really important because one of the things that we tend to do when we first start mucking around with the events file, you think, oh, when they run out of these, especially with the big guns, because it's normally always about the big guns, isn't it? You go, no, no, I want them all at once. Give me them all at once. And then they will be all at once, but they're all going to be in one place. <laughs> which is what you don't want. So, that's 1800. So, what's that? Uh, so, that's 1800 divided by... Whoop. Whoop, what's going on? Can't use the calculator. 1800 <laughs> divided by 60. So, that's 30 minutes. So, every 30 minutes, one will spawn in. So, it might seem very, very slow, but all these things are in place to keep the stable, to keep the service stable, and to spread these things around the map. Now, minimum, minimum of eight. So what this means is actually the server isn't going to start respawning these ACOG optics in until they get down to eight. When it gets to eight, it'll start respawning them in one at a time with a gap of eighteen hundred seconds in between each one. Quant min, quant max. You don't have to worry about those for the ACOG. What they refer to are whether something uh, is capable of having something inside it. Think in terms of water bottles, canteens, or magazines for weapons. What this means in this case is minus one means this doesn't apply. Quant min and quant max do not apply to this item. But if it was a water bottle, for example, you would have values. Um, uh, that, that would uh, designate the um, the percentage um, that it would be f full of uh, stuff. So it's probably good if we just go down to let's find another one that would have um, something in it, and then you can probably see what I mean. So I can actually show you these are the weapons, bayonets, butt stocks, plastic butt stock. Well, butt stocks, rail guards. Give me a magazine. Come on. Suppressors. Look at all this lovely stuff, isn't it? You think, oh god, yeah, I could do with do with some of this. In fact, I tell you what, let's use the let's just use the find thing, isn't it? Uh, so we'll, let's find mag. Here we go. So we found this mag. So the mag for the nineteen eleven seven round mag. Um, so, so it says um, quant min is 10, quant max is 100. So what that means is when this magazine spawns in, 
it, it'll have a ra have a random number of bullets in it between 10% and 100% full. So that that's kind of how that works. Um, and again, that may be something you want to play around with. You know, you may want to if you're creating PVP events have it where all the magazines spawn in full of bullets so there's no messing around. Let's go back to the top though. Let's just get rid of that. Um, so we quite, so cost. So the cost is how important is this item to the server? So when the CLE, when this, the loot economy is spawning this stuff in, how important is it? And 100 means it's, it's important. Do it kind of thing. Now, this next set of values is really important as well. This is the rules that your server will use in order to count these, in this case, the ACOG optic. What rules should it use? So, in other words, should it count items that are in barrels? Should it count items that are in the player's hands? Should it count items that have been buried? Should it out count items that are damaged? Should it count items that have been made? Let me scroll across a little bit. Let me scroll across so I can see. And, and what the noughts and ones mean is naught means no, one means yes. So in the case of the ACOG optic, don't count them if they're in in cargo, which are, which are these barrels and chests. Don't ca sorry, I think no barrels and chests. I think hoarder. Don't count them if they're in cargo. So that means if they're inside something else. Um, don't count them if they're on a player. Don't count them if they've been crafted. Don't count them if they've been. I think de loot means damage. I think I'm not dead sure, but it might do. But only count them if they're on the map so you can see by that with those rules that the ACOG scope actually there could be an awful lot more than 15 of them on your map at any one time if they're all in players hands or on their weapons or they've got them in their barrels now with the case with something like the ACOG scope it doesn't really matter does it because they're not that important people aren't going to be you know finding hundreds of these things and going oh I'm going to keep them at my base or I'm going to bury them in a dry bag somewhere so it doesn't matter that much um, also scopes are quite important aren't they in terms of putting them on guns and making them useful however if we do another search control F let's look for the M4 right here we go so this is the M4 so the M4 one of the the most popular assault rifles you know that we all want, like to have a go with because it's easy to control there's plenty of mags around plenty of ammo if we look at this baby the flags, the default flags in Vanilla Daisy, count in cargo, yes. Count in hoarder, yes. Count in map, yes, one. Because you should always keep counting map. Because if you don't have that, they're going to keep spawning and spawning and spawning. Which might seem like a great idea, but eventually the loot economy is going to break and things aren't going to spawn and your players aren't going to be very happy. Uh, count in, all right, here we go. Count in player, no. So if people have got them, don't worry about it. Crafted no, dilute no. Now bear in mind that on the vanilla servers, there should only be ten of them altogether. So you could see you, you're starting to get an idea when you look at these files, like the events file, like the sorry, like, like the um, like the types file, how understandable it is that on public servers and private servers as well, the high-end weapons just disappear. And you've got very small chance of ever finding them because if they're counting them in cargo and in hordes we all know that on public servers people go around they find these guns and if you've got it you're like brilliant and if you find another one you're like even better i'm gonna bury that somewhere just in case i need it if i die you know so this is okay a good case say with the m4 where you would want to increase that nominal to to like 20 maybe 30 even um, or you might want to do something like don't count it in cargo, don't count it in hoarder, only count it in the map, so that they, they can continue to continue to spawn in in higher end places. Um, while we're on the M4, actually, we'll, we'll we'll talk about another couple of things as well. We've got the category name weapon, the usage name military, and the tier the, the tier value tier three and tier tier four. So as you know, in Daisy things spawn in specific places don't they in terms of um, military loot spawns near military tents and near military bases and medical loot spawns near medical places like hospitals 
and the clinics and that sort of thing and that relates to that also the category name name being um, weapons and the usage name being military as well is the fact that um, w when loot spawns say around a, a helicopter crash site it will just be it will just be military stuff and it'll be military weapons and and they'll they'll spawn there but it, um and, and that does that and then the tier three and the tier four is the is the the value of the loot so tier three and tier four stuff tiff will, will only spawn in higher end military places sort of if we're talking churnerist that we're talking in the northwest um or around helicopter crash sites that way now also underneath the m4 you'll see this baby you'll see the M4A1 black and the M4A1 green, coloured versions of the M4. But you'll see the nominal is set down to zero. Now, you may well come across a few things like this, but you think, well, wait a minute, I've never seen that in the game. Um, what, what are they? You could turn these on and see whether they spawn or not. It all depends whether things like the assets are complete for them in terms of you know the graphics the models the animations they might might not be there so turn them on at your own risk you know sometimes you've got to ask yourself is it really worth risking the stability of the server to, tr to try these things maybe it is maybe it isn't but you know for, I, I would say when you're setting up a custom server and setting up a custom experience in daisy which is what you're doing by playing around with something like the types xml file um stability and reliability have got to be near the top of your list of the things you're doing you know so if if you want to have more guns you know concentrate on just increasing the the, the vanilla guns that are in the game already don't think about oh right wouldn't it be really cool if we could have a cameo mozan or one of the other guns because that will lead to a decrease in stability maybe maybe and there's so many things that can go wrong with this game anyway that i think you want to reduce the risk of that happening so as you can see this file is absolutely massive but what you can do is when you're using the browser say you're in chrome you can use the search function to go up and down and find stuff and i always think before you go into the the types file just have an idea have a write it down on an, on another text file or, or somewhere on a piece of paper what are the things you want to change you know maybe if you've got run a discord ask the people on it what, what would you want to change what do you think we should have more of what do you think we don't need and then just change small ex small amount so think in, think in terms of um quality of life things you know nice things to have well oh, the game would be a bit easier if we had a few more of these or oh, the game would be a lot cooler if we had a few more of these you know and then you can go to control f for example so a classic one is tape isn't it duct tape so i can do that and there we go name duct tape so in the game duct tape um there should be 80 um and uh, it will restock after 60 um, and there's there's no gap in between restock either so it will just restart restocking them in straight away um, interesting quant min quant max so I'm not quite sure that how that I would have thought duct tape would have had a quant min quant max for how much there is in it but obviously didn't does is done in another way so you may want to say okay let's increase that to say a hundred or 120 it's only ever counted on the map it's never counted if it's in hordes or in cargoes or anything like that so but don't go mad just change it a little bit um another good one would be say compasses you know that that's a classic quality of life thing isn't it to have a few more compasses on the map so people can find their way around um other ones are say uh, uh what do they, sometimes it's going to be difficult to figure out what stuff's called uh, can canteens so so there's only ever should only ever be um, spawning in 20 canteens uh, canteens now the game only counts the ones that are on the map so if people are holding on to them and stuff it doesn't count them it spawns more in but maybe you want a few more canteens and then just change those things that you you've made a list of you know m4 mags m4s vsss <laughs> lars okay you know increase those sorts of things but just by bit always think in terms of maybe 10 to 20 percent and when you're done and you're happy you know all you got to do is you come down to the, save the changes and then you just want to restart the server 
and those they will then take effect those changes um, and then ask your people on your discord or ask you know whoever's on the server again look yourself and, and just ask them look can you have a look out for these things and send me some screenshots when you see this stuff have you noticed um, that, that there's more of this or, or there's less of this um, but as I say just change small things at the same time but hopefully you know don't be intimidated intimidated by the fact that this file is so huge because often you'll only want to be changing certain things because lots of things about Daisy they're pretty much okay aren't they they're pretty much okay okay good so hopefully that's uh, useful um hopefully uh, it's giving you a few ideas and um yeah if you've enjoyed the video hit like if you want to see more of the same press subscribe thank you very much and i'll see you again soon